What's up, Outlaw Nation? Continuing on with our handgun or pistol, if you're just old school, series, let's talk about fundamentals of marksmanship. Now, you can practice this dry fire. You should practice this way more dry fire than you actually get live fire, and you'll find out that you'll actually do live fire better. All right, guys, let's talk fundamentals of marksmanship. First, let's look at two different guns. Now, I'm not talking about the model of the gun. I'm talking about optics ready, a red dot sight on it, or just iron sights. Neither one is wrong. You can choose either one you want. I don't care which one you pick. As you progress in your shooting, you will gravitate towards what you like better. But for now, let's start with iron sights. With iron sights, when I'm in my draw position, this is a great time to one, go back, make sure that your gun is unloaded. Make sure to check three times that your gun is unloaded. Take it in a safe direction, click it on the floor, pull the trigger to make sure, make sure you have no ammo on you, no loaded mags on you at any point in time, and get ready to train. So in my firing position, I've already drawn, what I'm doing is I'm focusing on my front sight and I have something that I've chosen in my background as a target. In this target, I have chosen a light socket. Light sockets are really good because it's usually about center mass on a person. If you look at them, that's pretty much a good level area to be able to shoot at on a target of opportunity or something that might be of threat to you. And it's also about the box area you need to be able to hit them. So. What I'm doing is I'm focusing on my front sight. My front sight is in clear view and my light socket or my target in the back is just a little bit blurry. It's kind of hard to mess with your vision. Don't, don't go too crazy about this. Just try to pick it up because what you need to be able to do is watch your front sight through recoil, be able to pick it back up and get back on target. Front sight is where we focus. It's the most important thing now. Now, slowly when I have acquired my target, I know what's behind it, I'm focusing on the front sight, I will slowly bring my finger onto the trigger and I will take the slack up out of the trigger. Notice that there's always just a little bit of slack inside of your trigger. You wanna take that slack up without pulling the trigger until you feel the wall of the pistol. Now, when I felt the wall of the pistol, then what I wanna do is continue to slowly, continue to breathe and Break the shot off slowly. Now, after I've done this, this is really important. This is called trigger reset. Come back, grab your pistol. You can, you can either do a full charge like this, or you can break it. I don't care. That doesn't matter to me. It's probably best practice if you do a full charge. Keep the trigger pulled. Put the gun back on the same target. Slowly let off of the trigger until you feel the reset. After you feel the reset, Breathe, <sighs> slowly press your trigger again, break the shot, and then you can do it again. And you can continue this literally thousands of times a day. Make sure that your trigger press is so smooth that it is not moving off of that whatever target you chose. You cannot do this enough times in a day. Now, what does this look like from the side? Trigger reset is really important. You'll see lots of people, I don't understand why this happens. Lots of people fire their gun and just completely let off the trigger. Fire and completely let off the trigger. A trigger pull actually is more like this. It's more like this. It's not this. It's this, right? I wish somebody would have told me that when I first started shooting so I could get it better. So from the side, what does this look like? I'm on target. I'm focusing on the front sight. I'm breathing. My finger comes down on the trigger. It takes up the slack. It breaks it. I come back. I reset the trigger. I slowly reset and boom, fire again. Showing you one handed so that you can specifically see what my finger is doing is I'm on target. I take the slack out of the trigger. I break the shot. My finger stays pulled, charge the, the slide, then slowly let off the trigger, keeping your eyes on the sight, on the target. When you feel the trigger reset, break the shot again. 
This is how you do iron sights. Now let's jumble it all up and show you optics. The optic is really, really popular right now. Do you need one? I don't know. Do you need one to start? Probably not. I have found that in the, in the few classes that since I've been focusing on whether people like an optic or not, new shooters kind of like it better. I personally don't let my kids train on an optic to start. I train them on, on iron sights because I want them to get that in their brain first and then it's easier on an optic. Okay, so an optic is a little different. I don't have to stare at the dot. Now I stare at the target and I raise the dot till it's hitting the target, but I stay focused on the target the entire time. From there, everything is exactly the same. I see the target, I've made up my mind that I'm going to shoot this target, and I know there's nothing behind the target. So therefore, I will slowly push my finger on the trigger until it hits the wall, I will break the shot. Then you can come back, rack the slide, do it again. Let, the, let your finger come off until it hits the wall, fire again. Same thing each time. The difference is instead of having to put my focus on this front sight to make sure I see where the trigger is breaking, I'm able to just focus on the target and watch the red dot in, in the back much like a rifle. So what does this look like from this side? One-handed, same thing. I'm focusing on the target, the dot is on the target. I break the shot, come back, charge my slide, slowly let off the trigger, do it again. Now I do this with two hands, I don't do it with one, but I was just trying to show you how this looks and how the different options for you to practice just getting the trigger to reset so you can feel this and just make sure that whatever target you use, you can use a sticky pad or you can use a light socket, whatever you wanna use, that as you use this, it's not moving off that target when you break the trigger. Very important that I always keep the, the trigger all the way down until I'm ready to reset and then I don't take my finger off, I don't take the pressure off, and I'm already at the wall again whenever I shoot. This takes thousands and thousands and thousands of times practicing. You cannot do this enough. So with the draw, go back and look at the previous video, you can see the draw. From the draw to dry fire, it's not possible for you to do this enough before you get to the range. The more times you do this, the easier it will be at you for the range to be able to draw your pistol, break your shots, and have better marksmanship. All right guys, thank you for watching this video. Remember this is a series, so stick with us and watch all of the videos in this series so that you, your family members, the people that you love can be safer and more effective with their handgun. All right, Outlaws, thanks for watching. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. Put your comments below. Tell me what, what rigs are you using? How are you shooting? What ammo are you using? Put your CCW advice for the new guys down below for me. Help us get back in that algorithm. Outlaw out.